How do degenerative discs cause back pain? And what does that tell us about how to treat them? Hello, I'm Dr. Grant Grouper, the co-founder and co-director of Princeton Spine and Joint Center. Technically, a degenerative disc means that the fluid in the disc has left the disc. When we're born, about 80% of the intervertebral discs in our spine are made of water. As we get older, the disc starts to dry out such that by the time we're 60 years of age, basically everyone has some degree of disc degeneration. Losing fluid from the disc has a cascade of consequences. Namely, as the disc dries out, it not only shrinks, but it doesn't provide as much shock absorption as it used to. And as a result of this, other parts of the disc and other parts of the spine will feel more of the shocks from gravity and from just life in general. It's important to realize that the simple act of a disc losing fluid doesn't in and of itself cause pain. When a degenerated disc causes back or neck pain, it's actually because there's a tear on the inside of the disc. This tear may or may not be picked up on an MRI. It's helpful to think of the disc as similar to a jelly donut. There's the inner jelly that provides much of the shock absorbing properties of the disc. This inner jelly, also called the nucleus propulsus, is full of inflammatory proteins such as interleukin-1, TNF-alpha, these proteins are called inflammatory proteins because if they get next to nerves, they cause inflammation, which is what causes pain. But without nerve endings, there can be no pain. And in the middle of the jelly of the disc, there are no nerve endings. It turns out that in the outer third of the crust of the disc, and the crust of the disc is also called the annulus fibrosis, on the outer third of the crust or the annulus fibrosis, there are nerve endings. When discs cause neck or back pain, it's because there's a tear from the nucleus propulsus extending out to the outer third of the annulus fibrosis, and this tear allows those inflammatory proteins to ooze out to the nerve endings in that outer third of the crust. And then anything that increases pressure on the disc, such as sitting, bending forward, coughing, sneezing, etc., will put more pressure on the tear and the nerve endings and this will tend to exacerbate the pain. Now, a tricky point about an annular tear in the disc is that when a tear is present, an MRI will only see it about 30% of the time. Why is that? Well, an MRI is taking slices of pictures through the body. A typical MRI of the lumbar spine might take slices around three millimeters thick. An annular tear is only about 0.14 to 0.52 millimeters thick, so it's easy for the MRI to miss the tear simply because of how thin the tear is. Now on top of that, and here's the real kicker, even if you see an annular tear in the disc, it might not be causing symptoms. And why is that? Well, if you were to dissect an annular tear in someone with back pain, you would see those inflammatory proteins we were talking about in the tear. But if you were to dissect a tear in someone who doesn't have back pain, well, you would see scar tissue inside that tear. So when someone has a symptomatic tear, and of course, the pain from that tear can range from mild pain to severe debilitating pain. But when someone has that symptomatic tear, the way we want to treat that person is to help take away the inflammation from inside the tear and then try to unload the spine in order to allow the disc to rest, to heal, and ultimately to fill in the tear with, the tear with scar tissue. Now, often this means an injection of steroid around the disc to help calm the inflammation down and then using exercises to train the muscles to better support the spine in order to unload the discs and help them to rest. If you're interested in learning more on these topics, you can check out our longer video on degenerative disc disease and also our exercise uh, video for back pain and for neck pain. Put the links in the description. Surgical solutions for a tear in the disc is generally a discectomy and fusion procedure. This is a surgery in which the disc is removed and the bones are fused to get together, generally using a bone graft and metal plate screws or rods to hold the bones together while the graft heals. Again, for more information on all this, check out our longer form video on degenerative disc disease. Thank you as always for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, or if you have your own experiences with degenerative disc disease, we would love to hear from you. So please leave us your, your thoughts or questions in the comment section. Also, please remember to hit the like button uh, for this video and subscribe to our channel to, to get all the latest information on spine and musculoskeletal issues. Thank you very much.